Hello, my name is Eric Roeder and I work in business development for Codelation. My team of elite nerds is dedicated to helping turn big ideas into first customers. Building apps and helping develop new businesses allows me to meet amazing people. These people are doing amazing things in our tech community and my actual community of Fargo, North Dakota. I wanted to start a platform to help business leaders and other great people in our community tell their story. Connecting with amazing people is my job. Welcome to my office. My guest this week is Blaine Boer of the Emerging Digital Academy. Their first cohort of students is graduating this week, and this is going to be an awesome boost to our workforce and our tech community. And so we're going to chat a little bit about it this week. Welcome, 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 Internet. I'm here for part one of our two-part mega episode with Blaine Boer of the Emerging Prairie Digital Academy. We'll kind of get into exactly what that is in a little bit, but first, Blaine, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So uh, let's see. I am a software engineer by trade. I've been working with the Emerging Digital Academy for, well, what month is it? August? I guess about a year. Okay. Getting all this together, which has yeah. been awesome. Uh, I've been into software development for close to 20 years, which is strange for even me to say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, otherwise, yeah, really interested in education, uh, software development, uh, outdoor activities. Biking and hiking, things yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I like it. So so tell us a little bit about this Emerging Prairie Digital Academy. Sure. So, uh, so Emerging Digital Academy, or you'll see EDA kind of thrown around. It's mm -hmm. uh, an immersive software engineering school, mm -hmm. uh, only one in the state of North Dakota currently, um, and probably for the foreseeable future, but right. welcome some competition. Yeah. And uh, we are... Um, really focused around getting students ready for entry-level jobs in the software development area. We base our program around a group out of Minneapolis who's been doing this for five years and mm -hmm. have had a successful program, so um, formally working with them. It's Prime Digital Academy is our partner. Okay. And uh, we're operating as a nonprofit here in the state, which means we can help uh, reduce barriers of entry for our students and try to connect them with um, financial and economic resources in the state. And so it um, gives us a little bit more flexibility than some of the traditional um, boot camp models, which has been Oh, I think that's fun. awesome. And so where, where did this idea come from? Like, I assume you were like watching Harry Potter movies <laughs> one weekend and you kind of think to yourself, I should probably start a code school and be code <laughs> Dumbledore. Can you tell us the, the real story of kind of how this came to be, or at least confirm my Harry Potter thought? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're close. Uh, <laughs> although I can't, uh, can't take the credit. The the school. Um, let's see. Gosh, the original idea would would have been um, spun out of the what's now the Grand Farm, which is mm -hmm. an emerging prairie project. Uh, yeah. You know, kind of working on autonomous farming by 2025. And so, part of the original mission of the Grand Farm was creating um, a five pillared approach to um, education, collaboration, um, just like policy and research. And mm -hmm. so, the Emerging Digital Academy was one of the original columns. Okay. So it's basically say, how can we bring education into um, kind of an entrepreneurial and ag tech focused experimentation? Probably a solid place to do that as far as. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yep. And so the, the general idea, it, originally it was like, oh, let's like work on farm tech, ag mm -hmm. tech, you know, how do we get robotics and IoT stuff? But uh, it became pretty clear early on that this was um, way more general than just ag tech. And so yeah. the academy grew into its own independent organization, um, or rather its own independent identity outside of just the grand farm. No, I like that. So have you ever, you said you were interested in teaching. Have you ever taught before? So not um, in this capacity. This is my first, uh, you know, my first day job as an educator, if you will. Mm -hmm. But um, here in Fargo and uh, a little bit in my previous life in Cincinnati, but I, I really enjoy working with various community groups mm -hmm. um, to do workshops and hackathons and all kinds of kind of more community oriented education. You Code Girl, um, Arise Communities, um, Girl Develop It, the Fargo Hackathon, Civic Hackathon, That's those awesome. events have been great. Pretty solidly. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that was kind of a mild trick question. I know you actually, I met you when you came in here and you helped us kind mm. of go through some of the problems that we were having with one of our bigger clients. And so, yeah, yeah that was, I remember, and I had nothing to do with it because I'm not, <laughs> not the coder. And so the entire planet basically had to evolve pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and especially education. Can we talk about 
the first cohort and how classes kind of evolved from the original idea? Yeah, so we are in our, so currently today on planet Earth, we mm-hmm. are in week 19 of our 20-week program of our inaugural ADA cohort. Yep. And so uh, the two students that you guys are talking with today are graduating next week. We have our second cohort just starting. Um, and so just quick reminder of just the, the structure. The first six weeks of our program are online part-time. Mm-hmm. Students kind of come up to speed together Um some might have ex- prior experience, some might might not. Right. Where the last 14 weeks of the program are, um, you know, up to 60 hours a week, plus right. weekend projects, uh, quite intense and immersive. And so, um, so kind of it's kind of a nice ebb and flow throughout throughout the program. But um, yeah, this cohort kicked off in April. Uh, every four months, we have a new cohort starting. Um, we have a little bit of flexibility in in our program. So right now, a lot of our time, the first ones pretty rigid to what our expectations are from sure. from our, our partner with our curriculum. Right. Um, but, you know, we have a little bit of flexibility, especially outside of the classroom, um, to adapt to the local market and work on technologies sure. that we don't necessarily teach but want our students to be aware of or continue their, um, you know, self-learning beyond the program. Yeah. And so that's been really nice to, to connect with employers and really um, our, like, uh, you know, secret goal is just to know what every – tech stack every company in the state's using just right. so we can help facilitate training. And Ruby on Rails, that's totally right. knew that. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. There's some uh, some companies you wouldn't expect using Rails, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I know you guys, you know, you guys use Rails here, but it's a, it's one of one of the um, one of the frameworks that I've worked extensively with and really, really enjoy it. So yeah. I have a feeling that especially once these guys graduate, we'll have um, series of training and workshop open to the community sure. to continue. Um, ah, that's so cool. I, yeah. I like that continued learning because yeah. part of the being around this field is it evolves every day. Yep. And it's, it, that's, I just love continued learning in general. And so that's awesome. These guys are graduating this mm-hmm. week. What can we do to help the students after they graduate? Uh, so I think the big thing is just um, continuing to learn more about the program, uh, mm-hmm. continuing to connect, um, you know, grab a coffee, just let's meet each other. A big uh, a big goal of EDA, too, is not just with our students, but with the general tech community in Fargo, yeah. just to continue to grow it. So to continue to grow, we're um, actually shout out to Fargo Full Stack. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but I uh, have not we're um, meeting for the fail. third. Yeah, no, we're meeting for the third time next month. It's a. Uh, you know, part of what we do is talk about networking and getting our students out there. Sure. But there aren't many active tech meetups in Fargo, right? Yet. Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. So we've got Fargo Full Stack. Uh, check out FargoFullStack.dev. But um, that's just one of our projects that we've helped uh, spin up. Um, CoSchedule is one of the partners in that. But we just want to continue to see community groups, um, right. you know, continue to support um, just interesting projects, continuing to connect with um, folks who are new to the industry, um, you know, Let's do more hackathons. Yeah. The big the big thing I think in our community is that we have a lot of interest and not always a lot of folks who are um, ready to you know step outside of their box to help host events and right, do these different right. things. And yep. it's awesome. I think there's a lot of um, engagement around activities when that happens, and just love to see more of that. Yeah. Well, it's easy enough. I'm great at networking, and so yeah. let's just yeah. do more of this. <laughs> That's the thing I bring to the table, and That's I actually I, I talk about my my dev skills and, and where I'm at and it's not good. And each week I make a business chart. And so this is mine this week and it's kind of, it's going over like my tasks and my abilities here. Oh, and nice. so we have things I sh- am qualified and should do and absolutely not. And so, you know, podcast creation is pretty high up uh-huh. there. Introductory taco meetings is high up. Actual coding is like, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's good. When, when we get to the point where we're too busy that I'm doing any coding, we like 1 million percent are going to be talking to your students because that's, <laughs> that's trouble. And I know, so I know a place you can get some training. Yes. I don't know. I'll go to some, I'll learn about how, why we don't like JavaScript or we get mad at it. <laughs> and so, yeah, um, you can't come down to our nerdatorium and mm-hmm. not get a nerd question. And so we we're talking Civ 6. Yeah. What's your, what's your go-to leader i know so i knew that was going to be the question that's the question yeah that's a good question so i played civ 5 for so i have this weird tendency with 
video games to just play them to the point of exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had like a single 36 hour Factorio stint and then never touched it again. <laughs> right. Like, it's like I recognize. I'm what, done. Yeah. We're done with this. Yeah. And so Civ 6 is actually, um, I haven't played much recently mm-hmm. um, with the with the cohort going, but I really enjoy the civilizations that um, that go uh, that go tall instead of wide. And so okay. I think that's fun, which it's, Civ 6, they kind of revamped it a little bit so that going wide is really more encouraged it seems like but um yeah i don't know so, i like to i like to be korea yeah <laughs> just nerd my way into space to win yeah <laughs> like, yeah and so i think it's just always interesting so i really don't have a specific civ that mm-hmm. i play i like uh, just experiment i'm really interested in game design and so i really oh sure civ 6 is fascinating with like the different unique like every unique component like, there's it's it's crazy it's yeah, yeah. i could and from a developer standpoint, it's really interesting. That sounds terrifying. It's yeah. so intertwined, so perfectly in. Like, yeah. yeah, it's really good. There's no wrong answer as long as you win. Yeah. So, yeah. like, that's kind of the thing. Nerd questions kind of mean it's time to wrap it up. You got yeah. anything else? No, just uh, appreciate the uh, invitation for being here and uh, nice work with the podcast. I think it's yeah. Really awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, thanks for helping uh, our community take the next step. I, I think what you guys are doing is it's special. And so, let's. Let's help some of these students find jobs. Thanks for for stopping out and being awesome. awesome. And have a good week, everyone. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah.